Today is May 17, 2021, and in a few days we in the United States will be celebrating Memorial Day, a day where family and friends gather for a cookout with good food such as potato salad, ribs, chicken wings, hamburgers, and hot dogs. We play music, backyard games, we swim in our pools. We're happy because it's a day off from work and school. Car dealerships will have their annual blowout Memorial Day weekend sale. Memorial Day is the official start of summer. However, there is two, more to Memorial Day. The history behind Memorial Day is interesting. The United States Department of Veteran Affairs on their website states, three years after the Civil War ended, on May 5, 1868, the head of an organization of Union veterans, the Grand Army of the Republic, the GAR, established Decoration Day as a time for the nation to decorate the graves of the war dead with flowers. Now, Major General John A. Logan declared that Decoration Day should be observed on May 30th. It is believed that date was chosen because flowers would be blooming all over the country. Now, before the official observance, there were many local observance days. One of the first observance commemorating our Civil War dead was in Columbus, Mississippi. April 25, 1866, when a group of women visited a cemetery to decorate the graves of Confederate soldiers who had, been fall, who had fallen at the Battle of Shiloh. Nearby were the graves of Union soldiers, neglected because they were the enemy. Disturbed at the sight of the bare graves, the women placed some of their flowers on those graves as well. The name Memorial Day was not the original name for remembering the fallen soldiers. The common name was Decoration Day due to the fact that relatives and friends would decorate the graves of loved ones who fought in the Civil War. In 1868, General Logan, the third commander-in-chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, gave orders that his GAR post decorate the graves of the fallen with the choicest flowers of springtime. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. Let pleasant paths invite the comings and goings of reverent visitors and fond mourners. Let no one neglect the ravages of time testified to the presence or to the coming generation that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. By the end of the 19th century, state legislatures passed proclamations designating May 30th as Decoration Day or Memorial Day. The Army and Navy adopted regulations for proper observations at their facilities on that day as well. After World War I, the holiday changed to honor all of America's war dead. General Logan made sure the men had not died in vain. As Abraham Lincoln stated in his Gettysburg Address, the greatest task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that the nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. So, when a prominent American politician gave a speech two years ago saying, we're not going to make America great again, it was never that great, I was saddened. The remarks showed a callous disdain to the young men and women of America's military who gave the last full measure of devotion, and to the reason why there is a Memorial Day. Who are these young people who answered America's call? Well, there's 31-year-old Merrill C. Beale. He was a shoemaker from Natick, Massachusetts. He went west in 1860 to seek his fortune, eventually settling in San Francisco. He volunteered to join the 2nd Massachusetts Volunteer Cavalry Regiment in 1863. He didn't have to serve because California was exempt from the Union draft, but he chose to serve the, the Union. The 2nd Cav was, was there for the defense of Washington when Jubal Early attacked in Ju July of 64. They helped defeat the Confederate attack. Merrill and the 2nd Mass were with General Sheridan in the Shenandoah Valley Campaign. Sheridan, Sheridan and his army went into the valley to deny the South its breadbasket, as it was called. Maryland, the second mass volunteer cavalry, tangled with Mosby's Rangers all up and down the valley that summer of 1864. On October 19, 1864, 
General Jubal Early attacked Sheridan's army of the Shenandoah at Cedar Creek, Virginia. It was a surprise attack. It almost routed the Union Army. The second mass cavalry was in the thick of the fight. They, along with other cavalry units, charged the Confederate positions only to be repulsed time and time again. It was during one of these charges that First Sergeant Merrill C. Beale gave the last full measure of devotion. Then there's 31-year-old Second Lieutenant Clifford Ballard. He entered the Second Officer's Training Camp at Fort Sheridan, Illinois. This was World War I's version of Officer Candidate School. Then, after being commissioned, Ballard was assigned to Camp Custer, from which place he was ordered to Fort Sill for instruction in machine guns. Ballard was attached to the 339th Infantry Regiment, which was sent to Archangel Russia on July 20th, 1918. During his time in Russia, Ballard was in the thick of heavy fighting against the Bolsheviks. After one extremely vicious fight, Ballard wrote in his diary, November 4th to the 7th, in action daily, enemy getting around and attacking the town. Days not to be forgotten. Ballard fought through some of the toughest action on the Kurdish front. After five months of battle, the Americans decided to pull out of the Kurdish front. Second Lieutenant Clifford Ballard was leading a British officer to the firing line in preparation of taking over the American positions when he was instantly killed by machine gun fire. He had been wounded twice before in action previous to the day of his death. Ballard was a volunteer. He did not have to be there. He was there because his country called, and he answered. Then there is the story of the five army nurses of Anzio. The website Anzio Beachhead tells the story of these five army nurses who were killed in action. Now the Anzio Beachhead was under constant shelling. The GI serving us said it was safer to be on the front line than back in the rear area in the hospital. There was no rear area at Anzio. The Army set up an evacuation hospital in Anzio to take care of the wounded and get them out to the hospital ships. Problem was, the whole beachhead was under constant artillery fire. There was no safe place in Anzio during January and February of 1944. The Army nurses were sharing the same risks as the common, infantry, uh, common infantrymen and they suffered the same fate. On February 7, 1944, a German artillery shell killed 1st Lieutenant Blanche F. Sigmund of East Akron, Ohio, and 1st Lieutenant Marjorie Morrow of Ohio. Three days later, on February 10, 1944, artillery barrage caused the death of 1st Lieutenant Glenda Spielkhaus and 1st Lieutenant Laverne Farquhar. They didn't even have a chance to get out of their tent and into the foxhole they had dug right outside their tent. Then on February 12, 1944, Lieutenant Ellen Zainsworth had just gotten off duty and was in her tent when a German bomb exploded outside striking her with bomb fragments. Ainsworth was rushed to surgery, but she succumbed to her wounds two days later. These five army nurses exemplified the dedication to their profession and to their courage to answer America's call for nurses to tend to the wounded. They gave the last full measure of devotion. There are hundreds and thousands of stories like these that need to be remembered by all Americans. Unfortunately, there is a disturbing trend happening among our young people in our country today. They have a disrespect for America and for what the country stands for. They also, have, they also have a woefully limited understanding of the good this country has done over the last 245 years. It's no wonder America's young people feel the way they do when we have politicians saying America was never great. To that politician, I say, remember what General Logan said in 1864, before you so casually pander for votes with the soundbite. Let no neglect, no ravage of time testify to the present or to the coming generation that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. Memorial Day is more than a cookout, car sales, blowout extravaganzas and concerts. It's about the men and women who gave the last full measure of devotion to a country that stands for freedom and individual liberties. In 2000, Congress passed the National Moment of Remembrance Act, asking people to stop and remember at 3 p.m. all of America's fallen men and women. Please take a moment this year and remember our fallen men and women. Well, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, leave a comment down below, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell. 
I post a new video approximately every two weeks. Thank you for watching.